I want to say welcome to Unisic 94.1 FM. Let's know you properly. My name is Jude Emiketa. I will say sir, Jude Emiketa, because I'm a knight of the Catholic okay. Church. If I had to go back lane, I'm from Ozobolo, in the local government. I come from a background of a family. My father is a technical person. My mother is, was a teacher. They are both late. My father worked in short BP before he left. My mother uh, taught all through her life as a teacher. So I have this background that um, has so much discipline behind it. Most of the time, I just say that it's not about the family discipline in the house. Peer group can influence you. You behave somewhere differently outside the house and differently inside the house. So peer group had a lot of influence on me. I went to the seminary, Ohio Seminary of Nature. Of course, ended up in 16th secondary school or so below for my school certificate. I was playing good football, so I had to go to Enugu to go and play football. But I was lucky when I got to Enugu. Instead of going full time to go and play football, I got an appointment to work at the governor's office. Then it was at Tongbera, mm. the governor of Fernando State. I got an office, got a job to work in his office as an accounts clerk. So I didn't have enough time to play football anymore, but I was still playing football. And because of playing football, I had admissions, both in the rest of the and the Enugu campus, to read law. But also, I had admission to reach MassCom in IMT, Enugu. I was advised by some people, oh, why don't you go and read mass so they can have time to play your football. I left the law business, went to IMT to go and read mass communication, which I did, graduated. Of course, I played my football all through Enugu too. Anybody who was in Enugu in that region of 1976 to 1983 would have known that I played for Nepal, Enugu very well. I played for Nepal all through. Then I played mercenary for go railway. I joined the Rangers Super 2, when I just formed the Super 2 team to forget to take people into Rangers. What was your name as a footballer then? I am, they were calling me Papeche. They were calling me Seaman because I came with Seaman from outside. Okay. They, they were calling me Papeche because. Papeche yeah. meaning? That is, and when, when we are playing, they, and I would say, on a chair, on a chair, on a chair, for you to give me the ball. <laughs> okay. So my, then my coach said, on a chair, give me Papeche, on a chair, you know. And okay. I wasn't too bad in then playing football. I wasn't too bad. Anybody who was around that time will remember that I played very well for Nepal, played my scenario all around. Joined St. Rangers Super 2 to play for Rangers Super 2, hoping that I would to join there too. But because I was not consistent in their training, I couldn't meet up. So I went to uh, IMT, read I read I read MassCom. Then during our IT period, my uncle worked in a squirrel, squirrel in Lagos, squirrel motors in Lagos as the GM. So when I got to Lagos, the first time I got into Lagos within one week, one of his friends came who was, was working in advertising. I said, no, you don't must go out to advertising. And the way the demand dressed, you know, suit, good ties, and, you know, I said, uncle, that's where I'm going to go to. Mm. Instead of having to go and join my friends, so we are, we are in Newbury, so we are in Vanguard, so we are in Bunch. I said, uncle, I'm going for advertising. That was how I diverted into advertising and public relations then. Then it was a complete marketing communication deal for one company. You do public relations, do marketing, do everything in one company. So I joined that company. I did my IT there and it flexed me. So, but while I was finishing my HND, my same uncle, he has his friend, Senator Emma Wuti, I'm from Oiboy State, who was then a director in Sheraton Hotels. So my uncle, well, why don't you let you come and work in Sheraton, the new company, they're doing well, Kaja Hotels. But of course, I debated. Mm. I joined Sheraton Hotels. So we started working in the front office. And we had a very long training in Sheraton. We were trained all through from the community man through to the back house, which is called the kitchen, the laundry, and all that. We had that full training. And when I said, I have a full training to be a hotelier, mm. I know what I'm saying because I went to the best of the hotels, mm. Sheraton Hotels and Towers in Kaja. That was where I started my career. But while I was there, also, my uncle had a lot of friends, so our house was with him over activities. The models were always there. Emma Gwali came out, who is dead now, is you know, was there. I also had an uncle who is a who was working in NTC. So I had choice of jobs at that time, not as it is now. Mm. I had choice of jobs, and then he came out, told me, Look, you're at Mascom, what are you doing in a hotel? After some years in a hotel, I joined Pat Otome in Spatai Communications mm. Limited. Became an associate director in his company, and he exposed me to so many, so many, so many, so many people in his public relations friend. I began to count names 
you'll be shocked. I was so exposed that I, I not mentioned him one name was Sam Bobudia. Uh, why I had to mention him was he handed over NIS to uh, Mecca Omerua. So I had a very long stay with Pato Tommy. Let me go back to secondary school. In our secondary school days, we had nothing, we didn't know anything about mentorship. Then, then, I came from a home of my mother was a teacher. So everything about was discipline, 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 discipline. We're not looking up to anybody as this is our somebody we want to look up to. It was quite unfortunate. And there was nobody to cancel us. Then I say, oh, you are this, why don't you do this? You are this, why don't you do this? So, I think that was one of the difficulties one had growing up. We were just going left, right, going left, right until... So, did it contribute to your leaving the seminary to something like No. The seminary, what happened in the seminary? The, I know I had the discipline to say the, the seminary. But the seminary exposed me to playing football, secondary school football. Only? I'm not being a reverend father or no, we somebody also, who... No, no, you know, during the school days, you know, you play football. For you for your school. Mm. I was playing football for Ohio Seminary. And we played a match against Kurgo Junior at Yala. And I got that final that three of my brothers were also in that junior. And we were also playing football. Mm. I said, I leave Ohio, come to Junior. That's where we so I left Ohio Seminary to vote to vote for Junior. Oh. While in Junior also, that was when I met people who were playing for 16. And I said, oh, why don't you? So football was carrying me all along because I want to sit not, not necessarily that you had that flair to be coming into the ministry. Uh, no, 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 no. That was not, not, I was too young. 10, 11 year old yeah. boy. The push wasn't really about the ministry. During the Civil War, we met the white refugees who came in their white mm-hmm. and they were very close. You know, they, we felt that, oh, we can be like them. We're going to the seminary. That was the influence. Not really a calling, I would say. So, after Pastor Tommy, why was with Pastor Tommy? Public relations. I got exposed to too many municipal houses because most of the time, what the job I was doing was doing press relations, public relations for our clients, and I was just a director. I met a lot of a lot of top Nigerians. Part of Tommy exposed me to too many people and so many corporations and corporate bodies. While I was doing that, that was when I met Senator New Kongo. May he so rest in peace. He wanted to run for treasurership of SDP. He was really brought into politics by his village boy, Sylvester Kongo, who is currently the chief of staff to Akbabio right now. Mm-hmm. He brought him into politics, believing that he has money. Then, what was first in every politician there was money. Look, you have money. You can't have this money and be playing only at the marketplace. Why don't you also come into political space? And he agreed that he came to political space. He came to contest for treasurership of SDP at that point. And Shao Yararua, the, the late general Shao Yararua, said, look, young man, you have the money to do this. But unfortunately, in SDP, we don't know you. You just came into SDP. Uh, they were already programmed to give, I think, KRA, I'm on a chart, mm-hmm. to give it to him. You know, then, this is only business that they decide today. Yes. They give it by hand to people. And, and because he said, we don't know you, he came back and said, what do we do? He said, let's brand you. And take you to the world. I can beat my chest comfortably and said, Senator Anyo Kung, before he became a senator, my, yes, myself, Sylvester Kung, sat down and planned the branding of Senator Anyo Kung with the connivance of a man who, who was the editor of the champion newspapers in those days. Because he gave us editorials in champion. And of course, because I've known a lot of political editors mm-hmm. around who were able to sell Anyo Kung. Then it was a cacao joto. No, cacao joto was more popular than, more popular than uh, yes. But when I told him you can't run with cacao joto, you have to look for something else to do. So between 1992 and 1994, he chose to become an Ichi in his place and took the title of Agone Chemba, which was stronger for us. So we branded Agone Chemba in 1994 so strongly, a lot of people started wondering who this man is. That was gave him a leeway into his political life. Because all through, I was his press person. I, I allowed you to uh, give this because uh, it is presenting the structure you are made of when it comes to public relations, yes. and not really an Yes, no, say. no, no, not really an yeah, okay. 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 okay, so you were able to run through this based on your academic prowess yes. or based on your mentorship. Which of them? My academic prowess. I will tell you, and mentorship both contributed because. It was when I was in the industry that I got a mentorship from Pato Tommy. That's why I said Pato Tommy played a very big role in my life. The big role Pato Tommy played in my life was he gave me a free hand. A young man 
a very young man of my age, 30, 28, 29, then it wasn't easy mm. to entrust a young man with so much responsibility. He gave it to me and stepped back. I watched me go work with generals, corporate titans, many members of, of the banks of those days, very young age, and I was coping very well. And he liked it. And this thing exposed me also. So it really made me to have both contacts, both in the media, where we have exposures, then I was just social media then. But because HND at that point was already recognized as a graduate, I was forced to go and do a PGD so that I can have room to go and do a master's. Mm. A lot of my class boys, so many of them, after HND, some of them want to read law, they have to leave because the discrimination for HND holders there was very, also strong. Yes, yes. Also strong. So if you want to be anything in the industry, you have to move away from, from just from that. The only place HND people were given that leverage was in the media. Because at that point, mm. some of our boys were editors, news editors, and all that in the media houses. And they were doing well. I mean, a lot of them, while they were there, I was also trying to improve on the educational. Because mentorship should have really started when one was in the secondary school. Mm-hmm. Because that's where mentorship should have started with some people. But my own mentorship started when I already had graduated. I also not take it away from my own, who I lived with, who also exposed me for all these other sort of top notch that come to our house. I told you about the Wodos, the Indian Wodos, the John Wodos, Kenan and Amani, they were all this in our house. So I started seeing people, what life should look like. If you want to progress in your life, you want to be like these people, this is the, the way to go. Then I knew Kunko finally, apart from the opportunity. Apart, apart from you branded him. Apart from that, branded him. He also gave me an opportunity of meeting his friends. Okay, he was the one that lured into politics. Exactly. That was where I was really going to. Because it was him, when I was working part of Tommy, he called me and said, look, you can't, because I need to be going home with me to the village. And of course, I had to leave at Tommy to join him fully. Joining him fully, I had to start a company, a PR firm of my own, so that I can have time to always go with him to where I was going to. And also give me the opportunity to also work for some of his friends around, which we were really doing. And when I came back to Anambra with him, started going from place to place, from place to place. So that when I say I can tell the story of Anambra's politics from 1992 to date, I know who and who, who played what part and what part they played. Then Anandu Kongo took me through until he became a senator. Then he became a senator. I became a PA to the chairman of PDP in Anambra State, which he facilitated. As he said, Stay with the party so that it can be my eye and ear in what is happening in the party. So I became the chairman of I became the PA to the chairman of PDP, what is press and special assistant in Anambra State. That was when I saw what P2B was doing in Anambra State. Because I was here and I saw it. Whatever you say against the man, whatever you say about the man, he had focus. But he was not in PDP then. No, he was in Abga. Abga. I said I was in PDP. Okay. I was okay. the PA to the chairman. Okay. So I said I was in Nambra. So I can see what people was Okay, doing. okay, okay. He influenced me for leaving PDP to join APGA. Okay, okay, okay. Because by then you have already become a full-fledged politician. Yes. <laughs> now I can say, oh, this is what is really happening. This man is doing well in Anambra State. Apart from whatever anybody is doing, I want to say. He, he, there was one statement he made one day that touched me. He said, instead of our people importing one container of champagne for a barrier of their father or their mother, why wouldn't they put that kind of money to put an industry in the Nambra state? He talked to me and I said, oh, somebody can even think this way. The governor can think this way. That means he has program for the Anambra. He talked to me and I called my chairman and he called me. I said, okay, I'm going to Abga. Now you are in Abuja. Let me go to, to Abga. He said, I should be going, but he's coming there also. The Richard Zokorata had one governorship of uh, Imo State under Abga. And he was his very good friend. Ukje Penife, who is also his very good friend, was also in Apga, Anambra State. So he said he was going to join Apga. I thought I should go in. So I joined Apga. From Apga, I met somebody who introduced me to Anambra State Senate Judges. I had all the requisite qualifications. Then I, I was a member of Advertising Professional Council of Nigeria. I read Mascom. I know the business. I've been advertising. He said, Why don't you come and join us as the COO? That was how I joined ANSA as Chief Operating Officer, mm-hmm. helping the guy, the consultant, to put the place in order. At the end of that, Peter will be brought to Martin Suzuki as Commissioner for Information, who was my schoolmate in Ohio Seminary. And he said, Look, since you're here, I tell him and say, Answer is under local government. So you might just put answer out of local government and put answer under this of information. That was the, 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 the expository you've given now shows that uh, 
Really, you weren't into politics because that is who you are. Yes. Only that you were influenced. I was influenced. Inside I was influenced because all along, we see politicians as uneducated people who doesn't have a job that. to do. Still, people's money and all that. That was the way I saw it. By going to Andy Kuhu, he was spending his own money. Okay, our time is really getting up. Let's look at um, how rough was this all this while. From your school days to the time you enter into public relations, enter politics, and back to public relations. It was quite a rough terrain. Rough terrain in the sense that for me to leave the seminary to go to secondary school was a problem for me because my family is a Catholic family. Mm -hmm. For you to leave the seminary, that means you're a bad person. You know, and that brought me what the first between me and my parents. If you want to go to secondary school, you can leave the home, you can go to anywhere you like, you know. I had to start trying to amend places with my parents at home, which was quite a difficult thing to do. The secondary school, where I was in the secondary school, they didn't care whether my school fees was paid or not. I had to come begging, kneeling down, I had to begging for school fees to be paid for me. So it was not quite easy to leave the seminary, go to the secondary school, and then to go through the secondary school. At one point did you find the spouse of your life? The spouse of my life. Well, I was working with Patek, working in their UTB, and we met. And then she was from my town, one thing lead to the other. Did she in any way influence you in uh, making you who you are today? Yes, she made me to become prudent. And at the time she met me, we were, all our money was going to the club. Mm. The money, your salary is paid. Today, the next Friday, you're in the club. <laughs> and she drink. He drink that. <laughs> so you so were in right? Casa over there? Yes, yeah, sure. He was, he was. He was. Uh, the guy who not called me while we were here, I was, I was speaking with, came back from the US then, and they had a, a, a Beatles you know, car. So when we started the lands, you know, he was working in John Hood then. When we started the lands, we are, we are off. But when I met her, I started remembering that there is need to cook soup in the house. Mm. Because then, we don't cook in the house. What are you cooking food for the house? Just eat. I had a fridge. So we can always put, we were just junketing it outside, you know. The day you come back, you buy bread on the road, buy maybe anything like it. Okay. So invariably, what you are telling our listener is that... Uh, your eyes was on the ball, not despite all this yes. you're doing. Yes, sir. Uh, your castle, no very yeah. and no, all that. Your eyes was on the ball. Yes. Well, what I was, was it that your eyes was focused on? You my were not distracted. Was, my, my, my eyes were only really focused on. You are not coming from a rich home. You are coming from a middle home. If you have to be somebody, you have to do something away from other people so they can get to where you are going to. So my eyes were focused. I can tell you when I finished from, from my school start. I wanted to go and do clearing and forwarding. That was what was happening in my area yeah. at that time. My mother called me and said, look, you're my son. You can't go and do clearing and forwarding because if you go and learn that business and come out, you need a certificate to hold. Mm. So that if any day anything happens, you can put a certificate on the table and ask for a job. But please, go and find a way of going to a higher institution. That was what really, really influenced me at that point. That I'm not coming from the rich home. I, I don't have to be looking at people who are rich. But I have to find a way of getting rich also, and you have to work. Either you go to school, have a certificate, and then begin to work hard to be to so. So my I was I was really focused. Why we are doing all these things in Lagos in those days? My me and my friend we were really discussing. I want to get married one day. Mm. You know how do you do it? And I saw he get married, and he didn't get married to the beauty of the whole world. He, he got married to somebody who like you guys cannot keep eating on the road. He just has cooked some food in the house. Mm. Oh, say oh this is a home girl. Yeah. We are conservative, so mm -hmm. it's not like that. So we had to. So my wife really played it. With the, with the, oh, I was smoking also. And, uh, okay. And she, she stopped me really. But, you know, because uh, because she was not comfortable with it, I had to stop also. So that was one thing. Oh, okay, let's move to the town now. You've uh, navigated all this way, and then you settled down at Ozobo. How were you able to mend or rather add flavor? to the town where you come from and then do they recognize you as somebody who has worked so tall to come this far? You know, it's easy to sit down here and praise myself. Not necessarily. I know. Not necessarily. No. You know, I'm, I can tell you, okay, if you walk into my town or so, and ask my peer group, even the very young ones, I will tell you we know him. He does things for us. I try to, but I had that that multi then I can do much more. Because I know from where I came from. I know that they need help. So the little I can do, I try to do. And I can tell you, my people can say, yes, he did something for us. He's doing something for us. And that's why I can comfortably do in politics 
go and campaign for somebody and say, vote for this man. And they will believe you. And they will believe me. I want to give attention to the mentees now. The people who are listening to you, some of them are, some of them would like to be. Uh, let's look at the, the general situation. The students who are looking, some of them said, what is the essence of reading public relations? What is the essence of taking mass on? There is no job on the table for anybody that goes into that field. What and what should one do? What will you tell such individuals that this is the road to go? The real problem we have in this country right now, that people look at wealth as the bottom line of everything. They forget that it's not wealth, it's not the amount of money that you have in your pocket that determines who you are. Mentorship, kind of. You want to read public relations, you want to read advertising. Let me give you an example. I have some French architects in our own days. Today, there are some apps that have taken away their jobs from them. Are they still living? They are still doing very well. The real thing is, read your public relations, read your mass communication. In mass communication, you learn everything. From blog to everything, you learn everything in mass communication. Statistics, economics, it builds you for the challenges you meet in life. You come out, join any of the media houses, join any of the public relations firm, join any of the advertising firm. There are too many things an advertising person can do, a public relations person can do, there are too many things a mass collection student can do. But they don't sit down to think about what can we do. This media entrepreneurship today that we have Facebook, Twitter, I went to the certificate course, Level Business School, when Twitter, Facebook, we are really coming out and we are being taught on how. That's where the mass collection person will take charge of those places. You are really charged to take over the place. That's why every day you go to the platform and you see people write nonsense. They should take over the place and begin to make people understand that this platform is a platform that you can sell professional things on. The platform belongs to them, not to the charlatans that write nonsense and go around. They should take over. So, anybody who is trained mass communications today, public relations person, a mass communications student can do branding, can enter into branding, can. For Christ's sake, that's only the market commission. Invariably, it is lucrative. Very lucrative, very lucrative. Very lucrative. Now, what are your regrets? Or you don't have any? You know, in life, you think you regret something. You don't know why you left that in and went away. Because this life is full of thorns and breakers. So, what you do is, when I look back, the only regret I, I, I say I can have is, oh my God, why didn't I marry earlier? <laughs> Because I met my wife early enough to say this, I did not. But you know, wait, let's get some. She was working in the bank. We can do this. I loved her. I love her. I said, you know, it was like, let's wait a little while, a little while, a little while. So presently, how many do you have? I have three kids. Three kids. And they're doing two boys and a girl. But they didn't tell your line. My daughter, my only daughter is doing my life because she's also a branding person right now in Lagos. She works with an agency in Lagos. Okay. Branding. Because my son is an engineer, the last boy is really the short relations and history in Losuka. And then um, he's also had these creative ideas. He's keep telling me oh, that uh, something is. Uh, yeah, that's she might. Okay, might finally, be, uh, finally, uh, general advice to upcoming ones the road to success is not just a free ride. Don't be a copycat. Sit down, look at the areas you are strong in, focus on those areas. Don't do things that because Mr. A is doing them. Sit down and think about yourself and say, where areas am I strong in? People who sell toothpaste, people who tell tooth to a stick can be millionaires, depending on how you market it. So they should not be copycats. Don't say because your vice chancellor has made it, therefore you will be a vice chancellor. No, for Christ's sake, no way. You know, think, what do I want to be in my life as a person? What would I fit in and I'm comfortable doing it? I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing now. You can drive your Rolls Royce. I don't have a Rolls Royce. I don't envy the man who is driving a Rolls Royce. You don't even imagine that to buy a Rolls Royce. But there are some people in their life who want to buy a Rolls Royce. So, be focused on what you want to be in your life. Thank you very much for really coming. What is the chief principal to you? Is the watching the mellow? Is the watching the mellow of Ozu? Thank you very much for really coming on board. We wish to invite you again for yet another interactive session. Thank you very much for having me.